In 1906, Upton Sinclair wrote The Jungle, a not-so-fictional novel about the meatpacking industry and its terrible secrets. While things have improved greatly since the horror show days of the old slaughterhouses, things can still be awful for the workers and the consumers. But how bad was it, and how bad are conditions today? Here are 10 things you didn't know about the meatpacking industry. Number 10. OSHA Fines The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, was founded in 1971 and is in charge of inspecting company offices, warehouses, and factories for safety and health issues. Unfortunately, their job can be tough when it comes to the meatpacking industry. Laws could state that certain protocol must always be followed, but all the slaughterhouse has to do is make sure that things look good when the inspector stops by once every few months. Once he's gone, it's business as usual. Records show that OSHA has not been finding companies nearly as much in recent years. Could it be that the meatpacking plants have vastly improved their health and safety? Could it be that they improve everything for inspection day? Or could it be that they pay off OSHA to look the other way? It's hard to tell where the truth lies, but when the news reports still come out about injured and killed employees, it's safe to bet that the lack of fines does not come from higher quality working conditions. Number 9. Health Concerns Meatpacking has never been a safe profession. Sharp devices and crowded quarters are a recipe for disaster, and things have not improved much over the years. Couple this with the little to no legal oversight in the past and regulators ignoring issues to this day, and you have what is still one of the highest risk jobs in the country. Slaughterhouses of the past were known to have been covered with every liquid an animal has to offer. Before quality refrigeration, meat would spoil much quicker, creating a cloud of bacteria in the building for everyone to inhale. Like in the past, today's slaughterhouses put many employees at risk of injury due to fast-acting machines and little physical room for error. Along with all of these conditions, employees tend to work long shifts with limited breaks, making human error a daily problem. A slip up here or there can easily lead to tainted meat hitting the market and poisoning the public. So the next time you hear about a meat recall, it may not be due to something that happened at the farm. Number 8. Growth Hormones Before we talk about growth hormones in your meat products, take a moment to subscribe to our channel for more videos from Zero to Hero. Don't forget to like this video while you're there and click that little notification bell too. It's simple math when you think about it. Pump an animal full of hormones to make them grow bigger, and you'll get extra meat to sell. The only issue is, what exactly is being put into the animals? What kind of effect does it have on the human body when we eat the meat? Growth hormones have been used for years to get more milk out of cows, grow larger chickens, and to get more product in every way possible. Regrettably, for the consumer, the science is still out on the long-term effects of these hormones when people eat the meat or drink the milk. Still, it all goes into our food without a problem. The European Union has long banned growth hormones for animals being used for meat, but the USDA is perfectly fine with it. It seems other countries may be catching on to something that the US hasn't. Number 7. Antibiotics as a Solution Antibiotics are good. They kill bacteria and keep us healthy. That's why we have them in so many products. However, they can become bad pretty quickly when we ingest way too much of them. Thanks to the meatpacking industry, we are probably doing just that. Stats show that up to 70% of all antibiotics created in the US are put into animals at the slaughterhouse. That's a ton of antibiotics for one single industry. Companies could just maintain cleaner conditions for the animals before they are brought to the meatpacking plant and they can maintain cleaner spaces at the plant, but instead, they pack in as much meat soap as possible. While it may help prevent disease from developing in the processed meat, it could definitely be way too much. When too many antibiotics are introduced, it can weaken the immune system due to the lack of any bacteria coming in at all. So when a new bacterium shows up, it could be much worse than it could have been. Number 6. Cloned Meat Cloning animals is nothing new. In 1997, a scientist cloned Dolly, the sheep, opening a can of worms for concerns about animal cloning for meat. Decades later, the science is still a bit sketchy on how good or bad of an idea it is to clone animals for meat processing. 
Despite this, we all eat clone meat from time to time without knowing it. While it's not illegal, clone meat is not exactly tracked by any agency in the US. If a company wants to do it, they just simply do it. Typically, a company won't promote their use of cloned meat to the masses because, well, no one really knows if it's healthy to eat a cloned animal. Without information on cloned meat, it's impossible to tell when a recall is due to this practice or not. So for now, the science is still out on the safety of this practice. Number 5. Immigrant Workforce Cheap labor is an American pastime, so it comes as no surprise that the meatpacking industry has a sordid history of cutting corners and saving money wherever they could. And one place where it's easy to cut back on costs is by hiring an immigrant workforce. Undocumented and legal immigrants alike have always had a large presence in the slaughterhouses of America. The bosses love them for plenty of reasons. They tend to be desperate for any job they can find, no matter the risks and they are unlikely to report bad conditions in fear of being fired. Relief was nowhere to be found for immigrants in the meatpacking industry, even at their own home. Many lived in nearby slums owned by their bosses so the company can get the money back that they paid out. Whenever they wanted, the companies would just jack up the rent until the workers couldn't live there anymore, then replace them with new residents and a new workforce, starting the cycle all over again. Number 4. Child Labor Another American pastime for unregulated companies is child labor. These days it's illegal and policed, but long ago, every industry employed kids, even the meatpacking industry. Kids were hired for a number of reasons. Children did not need as much money for themselves, so the lower wages were justified by the bosses. Small workers were able to work with smaller machinery parts and get into tighter spaces whenever needed. Even the parents were okay with it, as it brought in extra income to the home. Even a hundred years ago, the minimum age for employment was 14 years old, but many companies skipped over that law and hired people as young as 8 years old. Most age policies weren't even enforced, so the companies just got away with it. Despite the dangers, injuries, and deaths, child labor was a staple of the meatpacking industry. Number 3. Inhumane Conditions Animals have never been treated well in slaughterhouses. Companies supposedly try their best to kill the animal as painlessly as possible, but due to unenforced rules, time constraints, and lack of space, many animals are treated terribly the entire way through the process. Some animals are even purposely treated bad for the sake of the meat itself. The biggest example of this is veal. Made from baby cows, these animals are typically either chained up or kept in small cages for most of their short lives before being killed. This keeps the meat soft and tender, but at the expense of the short lives of the calves. Sometimes companies brag about their humane conditions and talk about cage-free animals, but unfortunately, this usually means that the animals are kept in tight quarters with nearly no room to move. And the removal of cages sounds humane, but allows for even more animals to be stuffed into an already small space. Number 2. Deadly Equipment Meatpacking has always been a dangerous industry, primarily due to the machinery. Technology has come a long way, but the tools used in processing meats are still highly dangerous and not always maintained properly. This has been known to lead to all kinds of injuries and even death at many slaughterhouses around the country. Long ago, machines used in the processing of meat were crude at best. Exposed knives and blades made for a very dangerous workspace. Nothing was ever maintained and no outside groups ever came by to inspect the machines for safety. Today, the standards are a ton better, but risks are still present all the time. Badly maintained machines and cutting corners for the sake of saving a buck are common issues in today's meatpacking plants. Even though things are getting better, employees still get hurt or even die on a regular basis. Number 1. Body Parts in the Meat Nobody wants to admit it, but we all know it's true. With so many employees working in such a small space near so many dangerous machines, injuries are abound, and sometimes those injuries make their way into the product. Over the years, hair, blood, skin, and pieces of body parts have been reported in the processed meat. Long ago as well as today, it has always been easy to get hurt and for nearly anything to fall into the meat, usually undetected. Large open vats all around the plant make for easy access. When something nasty lands in the meat and goes unfound, it doesn't show up again until a customer takes a bite. 
Even worse is when it goes undetected. With the amount of processing that happens, anything that lands into the meat can be shredded and melted well into the meat, making it impossible to find. It's possible we have all eaten something we shouldn't have. Tell us your thoughts on the meatpacking industry in the comments below and take care.